The presidential candidates are taking different approaches ahead of the final debate in Nashville tomorrow night. President Trump is holding a rally in North Carolina tonight. It is one of the crucial battleground states this election and comes off his rally in another battleground state last night, that being Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden is off the campaign trail to prepare for tomorrow night's final face-to-face -face matchup. But the Democratic nominee is getting some help from his old boss, former President Barack Obama. Mr. Obama will speak at a drive-in campaign rally for his former vice president in Philadelphia today. This comes as the 44th president has largely stayed out of the presidential race. CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe has the latest from the campaign trail. You know, if we win Pennsylvania, we win the whole thing. We win the whole thing. Pennsylvania's 20 electoral votes are critical to the president's re-election. The latest CBS News battleground tracker shows him trailing Democratic rival Joe Biden in a state Mr. Trump won four years ago by about 44,000 votes. Hello, Erie. May I please have your vote? <laughs> He went back to Erie in the northwestern industrial corner of the state because it helped him win four years ago. It's been a mostly Democratic area until he flipped it red in 2016. The president knows that one way to attack Biden in this part of the country is to raise questions about his stance on hydraulic fracking. Joe Biden will ban fracking and abolish Pennsylvania energy. Biden has said he opposes new fracking on federal land. No matter how many lies he tells, I am not, not, not banning fracking. While the former vice president remains off the campaign trail preparing for Thursday night's debate in Nashville, his running mate, Kamala Harris, is filling the void, holding a virtual Again, rally with supporters in today. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, you're the key. Milwaukee, we need you. <laughs> and tonight, former President Barack Obama is set to hold his first in-person campaign event for Biden in Philadelphia. Joe Biden needs your vote. He spent the last several months urging Biden supporters to register to vote and is expected to make several in-person appearances in the closing days of the campaign. Ed O'Keefe, CBS News. And for more on this, I want to bring in CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. She is in Nashville ahead of tomorrow night's debate. Hi, Caitlin. So how are President Trump and Joe Biden preparing for tomorrow's final presidential debate? And can we expect to see any differences in how both candidates approach it this time around? Yes, very different pre-debate strategies coming from President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. This week, you are seeing a lot of the president. He's holding several rallies this week. You heard from him in Erie, Pennsylvania last night. Uh, Joe Biden is staying behind the scenes, focusing intently on, intensely on debate preparations, not having public events. He's done a few interviews, including a 60 Minutes interview that will air on Sunday. Uh, but largely, he's been uh, back in Delaware preparing for this third, uh, well, second, actually, and final debate. We've seen the president, uh, his approach to debate prep is being out on the campaign trail. He has been going after the moderator of the debate, already trying to say that this debate is rigged against him. So that kind of shows the strategy that he's trying to push forward. Uh, Joe Biden has been sending out Kamala Harris to the campaign trail, going to places like North Carolina, and Georgia, and we'll see kind of what changes are made uh, to this final debate. We saw lots and lots of interruptions by the president in the last debate. That has now moved the uh, debate committee to have a mute function. We'll see if that actually uh, works this time around. But we heard from uh, even allies of the president after the last debate that they wanted him not to interrupt as much. They wanted him to uh, give Biden more of a chance to talk because they believe, the Trump campaign believes, that the more that people hear from Biden, he can uh, have some, some stumbles. So we'll see if that debate strategy changes at all uh, tomorrow night in the debate. All right, so, Caitlin, more than 37 million Americans have reportedly already cast their ballots. How much difference can tomorrow's debate really make for that rare undecided voter out there? 
Yeah, if there are undecided voters left at this stage, record-breaking numbers coming from these early vote totals. Uh, as you mentioned, millions have already cast their ballot. What's been so remarkable about this race, Tanya, is that we've seen a global pandemic, an economic recession, social unrest, protests about racial injustice, lots and lots of things that could change or could have changed the trajectory of this race. But we've seen in polling that it's remained relatively stable. Joe Biden has maintained a lead in national polls, but most importantly, in key battleground states. Those are the polls really to watch. So even as we've had all of these events that could have changed the game here, including debates, we really haven't seen it move the needle all that much. So for those few undecided voters or those kind of deciding uh, whether to show up at all, this could have an impact, but largely we've seen that these kinds of events haven't done much to change this race. And Caitlin, former President Barack Obama is now hitting the campaign trail for the first time this election season for Biden. Mr. Obama has largely stayed out of the presidential race. So what can we expect to hear from him? And what kind of voter is the Biden-Harris campaign hoping that he can appeal to? This is a big moment, something that Democrats have been waiting for, for Obama to return to the campaign trail in person. So he is very popular among Democrats, has been able to prove that he can energize the base. And the voters that he's going to be targeting are those voters who didn't show up in 2016. Hillary Clinton underperformed Obama's numbers, uh, especially among black voters, especially among black men. So that is the great group that Obama will be targeting through his campaigning in Philadelphia. You look at a state like Pennsylvania, determined in 2016 by about 44,000 votes. We're talking really slim margins in places like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin that could have changed the trajectory of that race. And those are kind of the voters that Obama is going to be speaking to. We've heard from him. We've heard from Michelle Obama speaking to those voters who didn't show up in 2016. And you've heard from uh, the the Obamas and the Biden campaign this this plea to make a plan to vote. They've been encouraging people to vote absentee, to vote early, uh, to make sure that people show up. And so that's kind of the message that we'll likely hear from Obama today targeting those voters. Get out and vote. All right. So, Caitlin, we have learned that the Biden campaign had nearly three times the cash on hand as the Trump campaign at the end of September. Federal filings now released show Biden's campaign had around one hundred and seventy seven million dollars, whereas the Trump campaign had about sixty three million. So talk about the kinds of impacts these can have on these campaigns in these final days before the election. Well, one big impact is if you are watching the World Series, you're going to see Joe Biden. He aired an ad, uh, the opening game of the World Series, that you know TV, that costs a lot of money to do. He's been uh, airing advertisings not, not only in the, uh, during the World Series, but also during NFL football games. Uh, the amount of cash that the Biden team has to be able to compete on air uh, is, is really something that they um, didn't quite think that they would have at this stage in the game. I remember talking to Democratic donors earlier on in the cycle, and they were really concerned about the amounts of money that the Trump campaign in a coordination with the RNC was able to raise. Now they've not only caught up, but they are outpacing at record numbers. And so this kind of money allows you not only to go on air, but also to go on offense in some of these big battleground states like Texas and Arizona, even uh, places that are unconventional territory for Democrats. So that's what this amount of money allows them to do, critical in the final stretch to get out those voters that they need to show up. All right, well, Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you so much.